Hello, my name is Nelly. I work at University College Oxford, giving information and guidance to students, their parents and teachers about applying to university. I'm going to talk to you today about how you can be exploring your subject interests beyond the school curriculum in preparation for applying to selective universities such as Oxford. But don't worry if you aren't sure that Oxford is for you, the tips in this talk will still likely be useful whichever universities you choose to apply to in the future, particularly the more selective research intensive universities. The guidance in this presentation is mostly aimed at students in year 11 and 12, but it could also be relevant for students younger than that, as there's no age limit on when you can start exploring your subject interests for yourself. We hope you find this video useful. I'm going to start off with some background information about what Oxford tutors are looking for in students they admit, as a way of explaining why it's important for you to be exploring your subject interests beyond the school curriculum. When Oxford's tutors decide which students they allocate places to, they're looking for students who will be able to succeed on the course they're applying for. This means that the application process is primarily academic in focus, and tutors are looking for students who have high academic ability and attention in their subject. These aren't just generic skills or intelligence. Each subject requires specific skills from students who study it. So therefore, the application process will assess your subject specific potential and will be looking to see that you're taking subjects at sixth form or college which are necessary for your chosen course. Alongside academic ability, tutors are looking for students who are passionate about their subject. They want to know you enjoy the subject enough that you'll stick at it for three or four years of the course. Because we're primarily looking for academic potential and subject interest, some things just aren't part of the assessment. For Oxford, tutors won't assess you on experience or work that isn't related to the skills required to study your subject at university. That means irrelevant extracurricular activities such as paid work, playing a musical instrument if you're not applying for music, or doing the Duke of Edinburgh Award won't form part of the decision making process. That might come as a surprise to some of you. We hope it is a bit of a relief as well. Your place on a maths course or an archaeology course or a psychology course depends only on your academic potential and interest in your subject. It is worth noting that it's still OK to do extracurricular activities and you'll have plenty of opportunity to keep up your hobbies should you become a student at Oxford. Some other universities might expect non-subject related activities to feature on your personal statement. However, any extracurricular activities you do, we advise that they focus on those transferable skills and attributes that are going to make you attractive to universities. For example, the time management and organisation skills that come from having a part time job. Don't just list something. It's important that you explain what you learned from it and why it was important. And we'd recommend keeping the extracurricular, the non subject related things to the last 20 or 30 percent of your UCAS personal statement. I've used the word academic potential quite a bit, but what do I mean by it? On this slide, you'll see some of the general phrases which I've pulled from the list of selection criteria used by Oxford tutors to assess students. Do you have the capacity and willingness to keep up with and cope with the level and quantity of work demanded by an Oxford degree? Studying at university requires a lot more independent learning than you might be used to at school. Are you suited to that? Can you think for yourselves about your subject? How do you approach or handle new information? Can you think critically? That means being able to evaluate and analyse evidence and to consider multiple points of view rather than just taking things at face value. Note, tutors are going to be looking for evidence that students have the potential to develop these skills while at university. They won't be experts at it already, and students certainly won't know everything about their subject at this point. You don't have to be a genius to get a place at Oxford. These words and phrases have been pulled from the selection criteria section on Oxford's website. If you want to look at the criteria for the specific subject you're interested in applying for, you can do this at this website address. So, if you're interested in applying for a course at the University of Oxford or at a similar university, how can you start to get better at your subject? This will partly be done by working hard at school. However, you can also develop subject specific and independent learning skills yourself by doing supercurricular activities. Supercurricular activities involve you engaging with your subjects in your own time beyond what you're required to do by your school or college curriculum. There isn't really a limit to what counts as a supercurricular activity as long as you're enjoying it and it's developing your interests and abilities in your subject. Some events that you can attend in person can count, such as university summer schools or study days or perhaps public lectures or events in your local area. 
you can check out the events for schools run by Oxford on our website here. For some subjects, like medicine at Oxford, getting some work experience or participating in voluntary activities can be a helpful way you demonstrate your understanding of and commitment to the career that the degree leads to. Note, this isn't essential for most subjects. In fact, at Oxford, it's only for medicine where we need to know you're committed to the caring and medical profession. And even for medicine, we want to see that you have an interest in the subject academically too. You might want to take part in a competition like a maths challenge or essay competition in your subject. And loads of supercurricular activities are possible to do from your own home completely for free, like reading or listening to podcasts or watching relevant clips on YouTube. I'll provide you with some more suggestions later, but it's generally a good idea to ask yourself, is the activity worthwhile? Is it relevant to the course you're interested in? What are you learning from it? Are you enjoying it? Now that you know what we're referring to when we use the phrase supercurricular activities, I'll now explain the benefits of doing them. There are a number of reasons why you might want to explore your subject for yourself. Firstly, it can help you choose what you want to study at university. If you have no idea or you're weighing up a few options, supercurricular activities can give you a taste of what studying those subjects independently might be like. If you do know what subject you want to study, then supercurricular activities can help you confirm your choice and convince yourself that you really are enthusiastic about the subject. Secondly, supercurricular activities can help you with writing your personal statement. It demonstrates that you have a capacity for independent study to let tutors know that you would cope with the university teaching and it shows them that you're interested in the subject that you're applying for, enough that you've gone beyond school to find new ways to explore it. Exploring the subject for yourself, thirdly, can help you prepare for some parts of the application process, like interviews or admissions tests that are used by universities like Oxford. You'll be developing skills and accumulating new knowledge about your subject through your supercurricular activities that will help you think more like a university student and help you perform better in some of those tests. The personal statement and the things you talk about in that including your supercurricular activities, may well form the starting point of some of the discussion in the interviews that you might do if you get invited to interview at Oxford. It won't necessarily be discussed, but it's good to be writing about stuff on that personal statement that you genuinely are interested in, so you can talk about it should you be asked about it in an interview. And lastly, exploring your subject for yourself can help you develop the skills that you'll need when you start studying at university to make that jump up to the slightly more independent style of learning that university demands. The ability to maybe research things for yourself. These are the types of things you'll be developing by doing supercurricular activities. It's important to note that doing supercurricular activities is not just about filling your head with facts. History tutors aren't looking for history students that can remember lots of dates. Rather, the type of ability they'll be looking for is whether a student can analyse a historical source or identify the strengths and limitations of a source before helping us to understand the past. Physics tutors aren't looking for students who've simply memorised lots of equations. Instead, they'll be looking to see whether a student can demonstrate a deeper understanding of the maths and physics behind the equations they use at school by applying what they already know to an unfamiliar scenario. So, rather than exploring your subject in order to accumulate knowledge, do try to do something extra with the information and concepts you encounter. When reading or encountering information, always ask questions about it. That might be material set by teachers, a book you've read, an article online, something someone posts on social media, a conversation you've had with a friend. Get into a habit of asking questions about it. Judge how true something is, or how reliable the evidence is used by the writer or researcher. Would what you're reading be the same in all situations? Is there another way of understanding or working out the problem? It's important not to take things at face value. For example, if you're interested in politics, you might read the news. Try to read stories from different news providers and think critically about how the news is presented. How is a particular journalist or paper presenting a story? What is the tone of voice used? What do they want you to think about it and why? How are they presenting the facts? Are they implying anything? A skill essential to studying at university is the ability to identify connections between different concepts. Much of what the Oxford interview will test you on is how well you can apply your existing knowledge to a new problem. For both making an application and preparing to study at a selective university, it's good to get into the practice of making comparisons and highlighting differences between different ideas and information. 
For example, how does a poem you're reading in English literature present a particular idea or character in contrast to an author writing about a similar topic 50 years later? How can you explain why that might be? Can you draw any similarities between two political situations or two events in history, which on the surface might look very, very different? Another way to make connections between things is to treat all reading suggestions or things you've come across in your subject as starting points. If you've liked something you've already studied in English, why not find another book by the same author or books in the same genre by a different author? Supercurricular activities don't have to involve picking things up at random, although sometimes it can be good to challenge yourself with the unfamiliar. Supercurricular activities can just as legitimately look like following where your interests will naturally take you. You might pick up something you've enjoyed at school and then look for other ways to go further in it. As well as asking questions and making connections and comparisons, it's also a good idea to practice putting arguments into words. You might want to try talking with others to discuss and debate your subject. Or practice on your own, writing short reflections or comments on something you've read or done. A major way you can explore your subject for yourself is by reading. There are so many great books out there that can introduce you to a new topic or deepen your knowledge and love of something you already know lots about. For essay-based subjects like history, theology, English or languages, reading might be one of the main ways you explore your subject. Reading widely can help you get better at reading critically and help prepare you for the reading that you'll need to do once at university. Reading can also be worthwhile if you're interested in the sciences too. There are some great popular science books out there which can really spark an interest in something new, as well as hopefully being entertaining to read. One series of books you could look out for is the Very Short Introduction series, published by Oxford University Press. They're on the top left hand corner of this slide. These are written by a researcher or some other expert. They're short and written in an accessible way that doesn't assume you already know about the topic. There are well over 500 books on so many things, from volcanoes, to artificial intelligence, black holes, to film music. And there's plenty more you can read beyond books, such as magazines, journals and newspapers. Sometimes these things are harder to access without paying for a subscription, but some magazines will make some of their material free online, or free through schools or local library services. And some journal research articles are open access, which means you don't need a subscription to read them. Don't feel you have to read only in one subject. Reading in an interdisciplinary way can be useful. For example, reading about some philosophy or politics in the Victorian times might help you put into context some of the books you're reading in English literature. When looking for books, you could first consider what you already enjoy in or out of school or college. You might also want to ask friends, families or teachers for suggestions of things that you might enjoy or find useful. Some universities will publish reading lists online specifically for prospective applicants. Here's a link for some suggested reading for many of the subjects that Oxford offer. Please note it's not necessarily about reading cover to cover, especially if you find a book uninteresting or a bit dry. Just use these reading lists and suggestions as starting points to explore your own interests for yourself. And one great place you can find recommendations on things to read is Staircase 12. This is a digital outreach resource that we have on the University College website. It has lots of resources that are going to come up later in this presentation, but it also has a bank of book reviews where undergraduate students and tutors at the college have recommended books that they really enjoyed, that they think are good ways to experience a subject for the first time or explore the subject in lots more detail. Exploring your subject doesn't have to be about reading. Why not find a radio programme or podcast that will help you explore your subject interests? Here are just a few of the many amazing podcast and radio programmes available. For some, there might even be extra resources on the programme's website. For example, In Our Time is a BBC Radio 4 programme, which covers topics from science to culture and philosophy. On the programme website, there's usually a list of reading suggestions and links you can use to follow up if you've liked one of the programmes. Also, YouTube or TED Talks can be a fantastic way to explore your subject. There are also Oxford University lectures available online. TV counts too. Look out for documentaries or other programmes that you would find interesting. If you like physical geography or biology, why not watch a David Attenborough documentary? If you're interested in literature or a particular period of history, how about checking out some period dramas or adaptations of novels? Doing supercurricular activities doesn't have to be particularly 
highbrow. Watching a fun or inspiring documentary might spark your interest in something new that you can then go and research in more depth. Another way you can explore your subject is through museums. You don't have to visit in person, as many museums provide online content on websites or blogs that can give similar information to visiting the museum itself. Doing supercurricular activities doesn't have to cost money or involve travelling to visit museums in person. There are also some great subject-specific societies, for example, the Royal Society of Chemistry pictured here. Others include the Royal Society or the Royal Geographical Society. These types of institutions might run events, competitions, provide career or university advice, so they're worth checking out. Massive open online courses or MOOCs are a fantastic source of supercurricular activities. Universities put courses online for anybody across the world to access for free. You sign up, receive an email with access to the content each week. Teaching often involves watching lectures, participating in exercise or reading material. They can be a really great way to find a new interest if you want to know, say, what art history is like. You could look for a Renaissance art or a history of photography course to try out. MOOCs can also be helpful if you want to go deeper into something you're already interested in. You could look out a maths mechanic module if you're really interested in engineering at university. Note that providers often offer the chance to pay for a certificate of accreditation. That definitely isn't needed if you're just using the course to explore your subject in preparation for applying to university. Taking part in a MOOC could even form part of your personal statement if it was part of the reason why you gained interest in your course. Be sure to explain the skills that you learned from it and why you think doing this MOOC will make you a better university student. There are some really great websites and resources that you can use to explore maths and sciences to stretch you beyond your schoolwork. It's worth saying that there are some really great popular science and maths books out there that can help spark an interest in your subject or teach you about maybe the history of some mathematical discoveries. But the thing that will really make you better at your subject, a better university student and more successful in getting into university will be to practice your subject for yourself. So maybe check out some of the problems on the Enriched Maths website or the Advanced Mathematics Support Programme. Or try out some of the physics problems on I Want to Study Engineering. Some of these are school level and some of them push you beyond it and maybe at the level of things that you might be asked in an Oxford or Cambridge interview. Work experience is another way that you can explore your subject. This is only essential for those subjects where there is a career at the end of the course. And for Oxford, that's only medicine. It is useful for some other subjects as long as the personal statement clearly explains what you learn about your subject and how it enables you to think about your subject more broadly. And for some other universities, it might be more important than for Oxford and Cambridge. If you've never come across Oxplore before, I'd really recommend checking it out. It's a website created by the University of Oxford and it uses the research that's done by Oxford's researchers to answer and address some really big questions. The questions don't really have simple black and white yes no answers, rather they're a little bit more nuanced and you might come at these questions from lots of different points of view. You might think about something from a philosophical or ethical point of view or an economic point of view. You might find something on this website that shows you your new favourite subject, one you've never come across before. Now I've listed all those resources, I hope you see that it's going to be easy for you to explore your subject interests for yourself from the comfort of your own home. There's lots of resources you can be using, and many of them don't cost anything and don't require you to travel anywhere to do. When you're doing them though, I'll refer you back to our top tips midway through, where I said it's always important to be asking questions about the things that you encounter. It's important to make connections and comparisons between things. And a really good idea to talk about your subject or put some of the arguments, the things you're thinking about into words. For more top tips and ideas on how to explore your subject, you can go to Staircase 12, which is on the University College website. The web address is there on the slide. If you've got any questions after hearing this, you can email me. My email address is there or you can tweet as well to at Eunice Staircase 12. We really want to hear how you're doing with exploring your subject for yourself. We hope this talk's been useful and we hope it gives you lots of ideas on how to explore your subject. And I really hope you enjoyed exploring the subjects that you really love for yourself.